the Notting Hill Carnageville uh, that you talked me around. You said it should... I said, oh, I'm, a, I'm a libertarian, don't want to ban it. But uh, then two people died, eight people were stabbed, seven sex assaults, uh, fornication in the streets in front of children, 330 arrests for really serious crimes. Uh, you know, I cannot in all conscience uh, continue to disagree with you. This needs to be banned. And I don't care about all this idea. Oh, let's put it in Hyde Park. No, no, let's just get rid of it. Uh, anyway, uh, today the Assistant Commissioner of the Met Police uh, that uh, policed this, 57 police officers, by the way, were assaulted. 37, wow. 37 emergency workers were assaulted. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt Twist, the Assistant Commissioner for the Met Police, said he did concede that the level of crime is too high. He said it's not safe. We need to take measures uh, to make it safer in the future. Uh, this carnival has been going on since 1966. Uh, they probably should have achieved some kind of safety levels by now. If they haven't managed to do it by now, it's a lost cause, isn't it? I think the carnival is wholly discredited. Uh, I just don't think that any more resources should go into trying to, in quotes, make it safe. It's the whole culture around it that is uh, not conducive to it being you know, each and every year, a, a nice, wholesome family day out. What a shame it is because, you know, the idea of it is lovely. But for all the reasons that you list, I just think that this thing has had its time. Unfortunately, there's always a horrible fringe element there that behave truly appalling. Look at the state of the streets there. I mean, sorry, it's just absolutely disgusting. Um, not my idea of a great day out. Wouldn't want my kids anywhere near that thing. Yeah, no, exactly. Now, uh, this guy, Matt Twist, was appearing uh, before Lon London Assembly, that's the sort of basic L London Council, Sadiq Khan's council. Uh, this was the Police and Crime Committee. Uh, and he says our priority is to make this safe. We, ha we have to make, uh, we have to ensure that the carnival is safe. Well, you know, I'm not trying to uh, say that the police's job is not uh, very difficult. But, you know, with all due respect, uh, it's, pro it's impossible, I think. With all due respect to Mr Twist and his colleagues, they did not make this carnival safe. Two people died. Eight you people were stabbed. That, they didn't make it safe. And I would respectfully submit, with two million people turning up every year over three chaotic days, they never will be able to make it safe. So of course they won't be. Of course they won't be able to. It's completely fatuous to suggest that you can make something like that safe. For a start, you can't check who's coming in and out because it's not in a contained area. And you can't possibly be subjecting, you know, hundreds of thousands of people to knife checks. So I think that, as I say, I just think the thing has had its time, it's peaked. I'm afraid it's become a massive burden on that part of London and on public resources generally. It is a huge diversion of precious police resources, a terrible diversion of the emergency services at a time when people can't rely on getting an ambulance if they've had a heart attack. And then really, they don't all need to be diverted to the Notting Hill Carnageville. <laughs> and, and just look at the mess there. Look at the public effort that is going to have to go into clearing that up. What kind of behaviour are you getting from people that just think they can just throw their trash everywhere uh, at some kind of so-called festival? It's a complete embarrassment. Yeah, well, we all know what they, they defecate and they urinate in people's gardens. Uh, they have sex in the street in front of kids. It really is, uh, it's a mess. Uh, and uh, let's just encapsulate why maybe uh, we should seriously think about whether or not this can ever happen again. Let's remember uh, the three-year-old daughter of 38-year-old Cher Maximin. Uh, this little girl watched her mother stabbed being stabbed nearly to death in the street. Uh, Cher Maximum, the mum, lost five litres of blood. One of her lungs collapsed, and we now know several days later she died. That little girl watched her mum being killed. That's what happened at this uh, great event, this uh, explosion of joy and happiness, as The Guardian called it. You know, if, if, if one incident like that happens at an event like this, you have to question the entire event, don't you? Well, she, of course you do. 
Um, you know, why not like, Why not make it ticketed and then maybe people will behave differently and everybody has to give their identity when they buy a ticket and so on. I don't know. I mean, what a shame. It's lovely to see all the costumes and so on, you know, kumbaya. But unfortunately, it's not kumbaya for the people that get stabbed and kumbaya for the people that live in the area and have their gardens trashed and have to board up their homes. It's just unfortunately degenerated into an absolute walking cesspit. And let's, uh, lest we forget, Isabel, uh, 330 people arrested. As far as I know, I'm not sure any of them have yet been charged. What, what did that... Uh, have they been fast-tracked in no, a display No, of no, no, I, for, for reasons I can't quite work out, they haven't been fast-tracked. Uh, mm. uh, whereas the white working-class rioters of Southport and Middlesbrough, etc., uh, they were arrested, uh, charged, uh, convicted, put into court uh, and into jail within about five five days. So what do you yeah. think is the difference between them and the people that were arrested at Notting Hill Carnival? I can't quite work it out and uh, don't talk to me about two-tier policing because surely, surely that cannot be the case, can it? Nothing to do with that. But look, I can't <laughs> I'm afraid, very depressing as it is, I predict that the whole thing will go ahead in just the same way next year. There's no, There's not going to be any serious effort to sort this out because those at the top don't... I mean, Sadiq Khan is never going to show any great leadership on this, is he? It took him ages to say anything about any of the trouble at the carnival. So under this particular Mayor of London, this event is going to go on, causing carnage every year. There'll be more lives lost and more mess to clear up. And it's not a good look for our country. Yeah, and uh, I seem to remember that after the event, after it emerged that two people had died, eight stabbed, etc., etc., uh, you know, he's talked about, uh, you know, that was... Uh, the violence was uh, unfortunate. But in the middle of this event, uh, it was actually on family day, uh, when that poor lady was getting stabbed to death and so was a, 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 a very talented young chef was stabbed to death that day as well. Eight more, six more stabbed, uh, sex crimes going on, people being arrested with weapons and guns and knives. Uh, that was a, a family day. In the middle of that, uh, uh, Mayor Khan, Sadiq Khan, called it a stunning event, a stunning celebration of Caribbean culture. The BBC, standing in front of this carnage, kept going on about the dazzling parades. And Sky News, my particular favourite, uh, called it mostly peaceful. <laughs> I mean, this is fake news. Fake news isn't just what people report, it's what they don't report, isn't it? A hundred percent it is. And, you know, that's where it's at its most dangerous, in a way, because you're getting a completely partial account of things um i just I, I sort of despair at this stuff really i mean it just doesn't look that amazing anyway it was people <laughs> in brightly colored costumes i mean i'm i wouldn't be plowing my way through the crowds just to see a few people jiggling around um yeah. evidently some people find this very entertaining but i just find the whole kind of uh, thing around it, all the all the mess and degradation mm. and so on. It's just it's just not my cup of tea. I tell you, I, I, I'm with you there. I've never quite understood carnivals. Uh, you know, oh Mardi Gras in Brazil is amazing. I mean, it's just people with brightly coloured costumes jigging around, as you say. But uh, <laughs> maybe that's just you and me, a couple of old Grinches. Uh, hey, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, uh, Isabel, always a pleasure. Let's talk again next week. Love having you on the show. That's uh, Isabel Oakshot talks international editor